not just comedians, he's discovered singers and rappers and poets. This brother's multi-talented. Nick Cannon is this generation's Spike Lee and Eddie Murphy. Allow me to elaborate, because I know anybody hearing that is like, yo, my man is wild, right? <laughs> Let me explain this, man. Nick Cannon has done more for the newer generations of people in entertainment, not just comedians. He's discovered singers and rappers and poets. This brother's multi-talented. I think what ends up happening is we allow everybody else, once again, to influence us. I remember being in high school and loving Nick Cannon's music. I got that album. You know what I'm talking about? My, your pops don't like me. I've been a fan since before Drumline. I was watching all that. You know what I mean? And what Nick Cannon has done has pulled the Jedi mind trick. He's made you laugh at him so you continue to support him. Look at Wild Enough. Everybody's always been asking, yo, we need a new generation of living color. Yo, we need a, a black version of SNL. Like, it's it's wilding out. It, it's wilding out. You can't have this new generation of all of these improv comedians without mentioning Nia Evans, without mentioning Nick Cannon, because they have been keeping their finger on the pulse. Look at the careers of the people that have been through wilding out. Look at Apion Cracker. Look at Corey Holcomb. Look at Kevin Hart. Look at Cat Williams. Look at look at uh, Chico Bean, Carlos Miller, DC Young Fly. Look at Justina Valentine. Look at so many women who've come in. Shantae Wayans who've come in Doughboy. and cut their teeth. What did you say? Doughboy. Doughboy. You look at all these people that have come in and cut their teeth on this show and went on to do amazing things and are still doing amazing things. Randall Park, who's on uh, Fresh Off the Boat. Mikey Day, who's on SNL. Like, I don't have time nor the energy to think of everybody that's been through this show, but I will tell you that all came for Wild and Out because it is a new brand of humor. It was the, hey, I'm Nick Cannon. I see these talented people. I have a platform to put them on. It's no different than on a smaller scale, Clayton Thomas seeing some funny people and being like, yo, you're really funny. Although you don't have the social media numbers, I do. Why don't you come be a part of what I'm doing and we make everybody laugh together. And now you gain some fans from my fan base and other people. And Nick Cannon will never get that credit because people just like to make fun of his music. They like to make fun of him from Mariah Carey. They like making fun of the turbans and his poetry and the movies. And it's like, yo, he's getting the last laugh. He's making money off of something he owns. He's also hosting a thousand other shows. It's like, who's really to be made fun of here? This brother is putting money in other people's pockets, making a way for people to eat, but we won't give him that same respect that we give Spike Lee for doing the right thing, for doing Malcolm X, for doing all of these pivotal films that have hired a new generation at that time for Black and Latin talent. But we make fun of this guy. We support Spike Lee, Tyler Perry, Eddie Murphy, who had done it on the comedy scene first, bridging gaps with older comedians and new comedians and his own generation and waving in the newfound success of people that we look at to this day. But we can't give credit to this guy because he dresses differently than we dress. Like, that's ridiculous to me. Uh, Nick Cannon is somebody who has my ultimate respect. I had the opportunity to um, work behind the scenes on Wild Out because although Wild Out is a great is a great platform. My comedy doesn't fit it. And I salute everybody on that show because they think so differently and quick and everything. Uh, I just know I wouldn't succeed in that environment because it's just like, oh, oh I was too slow. Or um, <laughs> it's just like, they're really dope at what they do. And I could never claim to do what they do. And he's given a lot of social media people the opportunity to prove they're more than social media people, that they're actually funny on a stage in front of the world. And uh, he just deserves the respect that he will never receive. But I feel like uh, he's somebody that has changed the game and he's continuously given back. First time I met him, I was like, can I have some headphones? He was like, here. I was like, oh. So <laughs> Nick Cannon is good with me. Uh, if you're watching this, what's up, Nicholas? Hope you will, man. And that, that's a testament to 
you know, giving back when you don't have to. Yeah. Nick Cannon, I notice a lot of people that work with him don't have too much bad to say about him. Yo, because you get a chance to tune out the white noise. The noise is that, okay, people hate what they don't know. When I told you earlier, people would have called me arrogant or cocky or I'm this or I'm that or he thinks he's this, he's that. Let me tell you something. If you find people who've actually interacted with me, like have been my friend or have been people that I've given an opportunity to or has actually been around to see me, nobody has anything bad to say about me. And that's the exact same thing with Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon, if you're only going off of what the media tells you to think about him, then you're going to have a bad opinion. Oh, he's got the turbans. Oh, he he quit uh, or he got fired from this show because he was talking about this. It's like, is that what your opinion is formed from as opposed to being an adult and not reading the headline, but actually reading the article and doing your research behind the, uh, beyond the article and seeing what this man stands for? He wants to do a documentary picking up where Nip- Nipsey Hussle left off with Dr. C. Like, these aren't things of somebody that's a cornball. This brother knows more than the world will allow themselves to let on to. And that's somebody that is just a powerful brother. 